Okay, so we got to answer this last question, is which is what do these graphs reveal about the current JCC, well, current when I'm making this video, <laughs> um, JCC basketball team? And the answer is, well, there are all sorts of things it reveals, but there seem to be two main groups of players, right? Bench warmers who don't play a lot of games. And you can see, I mean, I don't know, well, actually I do know quite a bit about sports. They might be younger, brand new to the team. They might have injuries, that said, so and so forth. And the um, starting squad, the main squad that plays in almost all games. I say almost because there's this 11 and this nine there, right? There are only a few players who fall in the middle, right? I mean, and you watch enough basketball, you know that, you know, these guys probably over here don't get called on very much. These ones, you know, your starting squad and, you know, a, a common rotation, that's these guys. And then every so often somebody might foul out or, or get injured and these other ones have to come up and start playing too. So the, the ones in the middle. And also you can see we're pretty early in the season because at this point when I got this data, they'd only played 12 games total, right? So obviously as the season wears on, these numbers might change quite a bit. I think um, it's about halfway through their se season because I think they get about 25 games or so in a season and we're not nearly to that point yet. Okay, so let me make this, hold on, let me pause there. I had to make it just a little bit smaller font so I could fit it on there. <laughs> Oops, see, and even then it doesn't fit. That's okay, that's all right, it happens. Okay, all right, next. So we are done with c discrete data and we learned that um, discrete data can get a little bit funky about having to make graphs like that because it doesn't like these category axis labels. Now we're going to move into continuous data. So continuous data, remember, is data that has lots of decimal places that you could get tons and tons of decimal places if you could just measure it fine enough. Some things like money are technically discrete, but we don't treat them like they're discrete. We treat them like they're continuous for, for very good reason. So in general, things that we would be grouping together into bins, um, we generally treat like they're continuous data. Okay, so continuous data, we're going to have to have a whole bunch of definitions here. So there's classes. Classes are the categories by which the data are grouped. Um, when a data consists of a large number of different discrete values or when a data set consists of continuous data, we must create classes by using intervals of numbers. The first class at the top, second class, and so on. Now, let me just... Here. Back here, you don't need a class because there are so few numbers in here. You could start at 4 and reasonably make your way up to the top at 12. Now, one of the reasons I picked this data set because it had so few numbers. I looked at the previous season but it went up to as high as like 26 and as low as like four. And that would have just been ridiculous. Four, five, six, seven, eight, right? All the way up to 26. So what you can do instead is make bins. This isn't obviously um, the basketball data, excuse me, that I was referring to before, but you can see what you can do is you can say, okay, how about four to six, seven to nine, you know, eight to 10 and so on and work your way up that way right, into kind of categories, and we call those categories classes, right? So you're going to group numbers together. The lower class limit is the smallest value within a class. So for example, the lower class limit right here is 35. The upper class limit is the largest value within a class. So for example, this one right here is 44.9. Technically, it's 44.9999999999 forever, but we just kind of round to whichever number's convenient, all right? And then the class width is the difference between consecutive lower class limits. Catch that? It's not the difference between these two numbers. It's the difference between this number and this number, right? Between the 35 and the 45. That's what makes your class width. Because this number really goes on forever, you can't really use it. Um, well, actually, you are using it. 44.9 forever is essentially 45. And so that's the number you use, 45. 